Honestly, Bob, I don't know what you see in those hunting trips, Robert's wife, Rachel, sighed as she packed his duffel bag with thick socks and thermal underwear. Robert Hansen, a robust man in his late thirties, looked up from his newspaper with a knowing smile. It's the thrill of the chase, Rachel. You wouldn't understand. Their teenage son, Kevin, sauntered into the room, his eyes glued to the TV. Dad, you're leaving already. Yep, got an early flight to catch, Robert replied, folding the newspaper and placing it on the coffee table. He leaned over to give Rachel a peck on the cheek. I'll be back in a few days. Don't wait up. Rachel's eyes narrowed slightly, but she said nothing. She knew better than to question his hobby. It was his time to unwind from the bakery. The house was quiet once Robert left, and Rachel couldn't shake the feeling of unease. It wasn't like him to be so secretive about his trips, but he had always been a private man. She told herself it was just her nerves playing tricks on her. After all, they had a good life in Anchorage, a respected place in society. The morning air was crisp as Robert drove through the city's outskirts. His eyes darted to the side of the road, scanning for something that didn't quite fit. A young woman, no older than twenty, with a backpack slung over her shoulder, hitchhiked by the side of the road. Her bright red hair fluttered in the breeze, and she looked cold despite her thick jacket. He pulled over, his heart racing. She approached the car, a mix of hope and caution etched on her face. Thanks for stopping, she said, her voice cracking slightly. My car broke down, and I need to get to Fairbanks. Robert smiled, his eyes lingering on her. Hop in, he offered, his tone calm and friendly. I can give you a ride. Her eyes searched his for any signs of danger before she opened the door and slid into the passenger seat. She smelled faintly of cinnamon, and her nervousness filled the car. He turned the key in the ignition and pulled back onto the road. What's your name, sweetheart, he asked, his voice a gentle rumble. Cindy, she replied, her eyes darting to the gun holstered under his arm. Robert's smile grew wider. Pleasure to meet you, Cindy, he said, as the car picked up speed and the city lights began to fade behind them. You're going to make this trip a lot more interesting. Cindy swallowed hard, trying to ignore the growing knot in her stomach. Something about this man felt off, but she was desperate to get to her sister's place in Fairbanks. The warmth of the car was a small comfort against the chilling Alaskan air outside. As they drove further from civilization, Robert's demeanor shifted. He turned off the main road onto a dirt track, the car bumping along the uneven surface. We'll take the scenic route, he said, his eyes never leaving the rearview mirror. Her eyes widened with fear as she recognized they were going the wrong way. This isn't the way to Fairbanks, she protested, her voice shaking. Oh, I know, he said, his tone no longer friendly. But it's a shortcut to a little hunting ground I know. Cindy's heart pounded in her chest as she realized her mistake. She reached for the door handle, but it was locked. She was trapped. Robert chuckled, sensing her panic. You're going to be a good one, he said, his voice cold and calculated. You've got spirit. I like that. Her eyes searched for any signs of life, any chance of escape, but all she could see was the endless expanse of the Alaskan wilderness, unforgiving and uninhabited. She was utterly alone with a monster. The car stopped abruptly, and Robert turned to face her. Let's go for a little walk, shall we? He pulled out a handgun, his finger resting gently on the trigger. Don't try anything stupid, now. Trembling, Cindy stepped out of the car. The cold bit at her skin, and the darkness of the forest loomed before them. She could see the excitement in Robert's eyes, a twisted glint that told her she was about to become part of his sick game. You know, he began, as they started to walk into the woods, I used to be just like everyone else. A regular guy with a regular life. But then I discovered the thrill of the hunt. Cindy's mind raced as she searched for a way to escape. She knew she couldn't outrun him, not in these conditions. But she had to try. As they ventured deeper into the forest, Robert grew more talkative, 
sharing details of his grisly past with a disturbing sense of pride. The sound of his footsteps grew heavier, more deliberate, as if savoring every moment of the impending horror. Cindy felt the noose tighten around her neck, her breath coming in ragged gasps. But she didn't give up. The thought of her family, her future, gave her a semblance of hope. And as they approached a clearing, she saw her chance. With a burst of adrenaline, she broke into a sprint. Robert bellowed in surprise, his heavy footsteps crashing through the underbrush as he gave chase. The cold air burned her lungs, and her heart felt like it would explode from her chest. She didn't dare look back, knowing that if she did, she might lose her nerve. The trees whipped past her as she ran for her life. Behind her, she heard the unmistakable sound of a gunshot echo through the night. She didn't dare slow down, pushing herself harder, her fear fueling her every step. The clearing grew closer, a sliver of moonlight guiding her way. If she could just make it there, maybe she could find help, or at least make it difficult for him to track her. As the edge of the woods grew near, she heard Robert's footsteps slow, and she knew he was preparing for another shot. She had to make it count. With a final, desperate push, Cindy sprinted into the clearing, her eyes searching for anything she could use to her advantage. And then she saw it, a small cabin, nestled in the trees. It was her only hope. She sprinted towards it, her legs burning, her heart racing. Behind her, the forest was silent except for the distant thunder of Robert's pursuit. As she neared the cabin, she noticed it was abandoned, the windows boarded up, the door hanging on one hinge. She didn't stop to question her luck. She flung herself inside, slammed the door shut and frantically searched for something to barricade it with. Her eyes fell on a rusty metal rod. It would have to do. She wedged it under the doorknob just as the first impact hit, the wood groaning under Robert's weight. You're a feisty one, he sneered, his voice muffled through the door. But it'll just make it all the more satisfying when I catch you. The rod held firm, but the wood around it began to splinter. Cindy backed away, her eyes darting around the cabin for anything else she could use to defend herself. There was a fireplace with a pile of dry logs and kindling, a few dusty pans hanging from nails on the wall, and a small table with a solitary chair. Her mind racing, she grabbed one of the pans and a handful of kindling. As the door gave another violent shudder, she piled the logs into the fireplace, arranging them into a makeshift barricade. Then, with a deep breath, she struck a match and set the kindling alight. The flames grew quickly, licking at the logs with hungry tongues. The heat washed over her, offering a fleeting comfort. She hoped the fire would buy her some time, or at least make it difficult for Robert to get to her. The banging grew more insistent, the rod bending under the force. Cindy knew she couldn't hold out much longer. The smell of burning wood filled the cabin, mixing with the metallic scent of fear. Suddenly, she heard the sound of a twig snap outside the cabin, followed by a low growl. Her eyes widened as a large, shadowy figure emerged from the trees, its eyes reflecting the firelight. A bear. Robert must have heard it too because the banging stopped. Cindy held her breath, listening as the creature approached the cabin. The door rattled once more, then silence. For what felt like an eternity, she waited, her heart thudding in her chest. And then, the unmistakable sound of retreating footsteps. Robert was running. The bear had bought her some time. Cindy collapsed against the barricade, tears of relief streaming down her cheeks. But she knew she couldn't stay here. She had to keep moving. The fire grew stronger, casting flickering shadows across the cabin walls. With trembling hands, she pushed aside the burning logs and squeezed through the gap she'd created. The night was still, the only sound the distant howl of the wind. Her heart pounding, she stumbled into the darkness, hoping to put as much distance as possible between herself and the butcher baker before dawn broke. The cold night air was a shock after the warmth of the cabin, and Cindy shivered uncontrollably as she stumbled through the dense underbrush. She knew she had to find her way back to the main road, but the thick canopy of trees above her made it almost impossible to navigate by the moon's weak glow. Every snap of a twig underfoot sent a bolt of terror through her, her eyes darting around in the darkness, searching for any sign of Robert or the bear he had fled from. 
She whispered a prayer of thanks to the animal that had unwittingly become her protector, but knew it was only a temporary reprieve. Her legs grew heavy with fatigue, but she pushed on, the fear of what would happen if Robert found her again driving her forward. The cold seeped into her bones, making her movements clumsy and slow. Yet, she didn't dare stop, not even to catch her breath. As the first light of dawn began to pierce the darkness, Cindy spotted a faint glimmer in the distance. The hope it brought was like a shot of adrenaline, and she stumbled towards it, her eyes never leaving the shimmering mirage. As she got closer, she realized it was the hood of a car, half buried in the snow at the side of the road. She had no idea how it had gotten there, but she didn't care. It was a sign of civilization, a beacon of safety in the desolate wilderness. Her legs felt like they would give out from under her, but she forced herself to keep moving. The light grew stronger, and the car grew larger, until finally, she was standing beside it, her breath coming in ragged gasps. Her trembling hands searched the pockets of her jacket, finally finding a small knife she always carried for protection. It wasn't much, but it was something. With a deep breath, she approached the car, ready to defend herself against whatever might be waiting inside. The door was unlocked, and she slipped in, pulling it shut with a soft click. The interior was cold, but the metal frame of the car offered some protection from the elements. She leaned back into the seat, her eyes closing briefly, and allowed herself to believe she might just make it out of this nightmare alive. But she knew she couldn't rest yet. She had to find help, to get as far away from this place as possible. Starting the car was a risk, but it was one she had to take. If Robert was still out there, he'd hear the engine and come for her, but if she stayed put, she was as good as dead. Her trembling hands found the ignition, and she turned the key. The engine coughed, then roared to life. Cindy's eyes snapped open, and she threw the car into gear, her foot pressing down hard on the gas pedal. The car lurched forward, the tires spinning in the snow before finally finding purchase. She sent up a silent thanks to whatever guardian angel had led her to this abandoned car and steeled herself for the journey ahead. The road was treacherous, a slick ribbon of ice that twisted and turned through the mountains. Cindy clutched the steering wheel, her knuckles white with tension. Every minute that passed was a victory, every mile a step closer to freedom. The sun rose in the sky, casting a harsh light on the snowy landscape, illuminating the horror she had escaped from. She knew Robert would be out there, searching for her, but she had the advantage now. Her eyes never left the road, scanning for any sign of other vehicles, of life. Her mind raced, trying to piece together what she would say when she reached civilization, how she would explain the terror she had endured. As the hours passed, the car's heater began to warm her frozen body, and she allowed herself to feel a flicker of hope. Maybe she could escape this nightmare after all. But even as the miles grew behind her, Cindy couldn't shake the feeling that the butcher baker was never far away. His shadow loomed over her, a constant reminder of the danger she faced. She knew she wouldn't truly be safe until she was far beyond his reach. The car's gas gauge hovered near empty, the needle quivering with each bump in the road. Cindy bit her lip, her eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of a gas station or another human being. The isolation was suffocating, the silence of the wilderness a stark contrast to the cacophony of fear that played in her head. As the car chugged along, she spotted a plume of smoke rising in the distance. A house, perhaps, or a cabin. Cindy's pulse quickened. Help, or another trap. She had to take the chance. The car sputtered and died as she pulled into the driveway of what appeared to be an abandoned shack. She stumbled out, her legs unsteady from the hours of driving. The door of the shack was ajar, and the smoke she had seen was coming from the chimney. Inside, she found an old woman, her eyes wide with shock as Cindy burst in, her knife still clutched in her hand. Please, Cindy panted, help me. He's after me. The woman took in her disheveled state, the panic etched on her face. She moved with surprising swiftness, taking Cindy's hand and leading her to a small bed in the corner. You're safe here, she assured her. I'll get you some water and something to eat. You rest. Cindy's eyes grew heavy with exhaustion, and she allowed herself to collapse onto the bed. The woman's voice was soothing, 
and she felt a warmth in her chest she hadn't felt in what felt like an eternity. But even as she closed her eyes, her mind raced. What if Robert had seen the smoke? What if he was on his way here now? The woman had said she was safe, but how could she be sure? The minutes ticked by, each one feeling like an hour. The warmth of the shack began to seep into her bones, but it couldn't touch the ice that had formed around her heart. When the woman returned, she had a steaming cup of tea and a plate of crackers. Cindy took them gratefully, her throat dry from the cold and fear. As she sipped the tea, she felt a bit of the tension ease from her shoulders. The woman spoke in a low voice, telling her that she had called the authorities and that they would be there soon. Cindy nodded, trying to believe it, trying to convince herself that this nightmare was almost over. But the fear didn't leave her completely. It lingered like a specter in the shadows of the room, whispering that Robert was still out there, waiting for his prey. And as the sound of sirens grew closer, she couldn't help but wonder if she had truly escaped the butcher baker's clutches, or if he was merely biding his time, waiting for the next opportunity to pounce. Robert Hansen was eventually apprehended, his reign of terror in the Alaskan night finally brought to an end. As he was led away in handcuffs, the community of Anchorage breathed a collective sigh of relief. The trial was a harrowing affair, with grisly details of his crimes spilling out into the open. The jury took little time to deliberate, their verdict unanimous, guilty on all counts. The judge looked down at him, her eyes filled with a mix of disgust and pity, as she sentenced him to 461 years in prison without the possibility of parole. It was a sentence that would keep him behind bars for the rest of his natural life, a cage to contain the beast that had prowled the city streets. But even as the bars slammed shut on his cell, the fear remained. Rachel and Kevin visited him once, their eyes wide with shock and betrayal. Rachel had thought she knew the man she had shared a life with, but the monster revealed in the courtroom was a stranger to her. Kevin, on the cusp of adulthood, was silent, his gaze unflinching. The years passed, and the legend of the butcher baker grew, becoming a cautionary tale whispered in the shadows. Yet, in the quiet moments of her life, Rachel often found herself questioning, wondering if there had been signs she had missed, if there was something she could have done to stop him. And Cindy, the girl who had managed to outsmart him, lived with the memory of that night etched into her soul. The scars of her ordeal were not just physical but also psychological, a constant reminder of the darkness that lurked in the hearts of men. The story of Robert Hansen served as a grim testament to the horrors that could be hidden behind the most mundane of facades. His name became synonymous with the evil that lurked just beneath the surface of their once tranquil lives, a name that sent shivers down the spines of those who heard it. But amidst the horror, there was also a tale of survival, of a young woman's unbreakable spirit that had carried her through the unthinkable. Her courage in the face of such monstrous adversity became a beacon of hope, a reminder that even in the darkest of moments, there was always a way out. As the decades rolled by, Rachel and Kevin moved on, their lives forever changed by the revelations of Robert's true nature. Yet, they remained haunted by the specter of what could have been, the lives he had stolen, and the pain he had left in his wake. And Robert Hansen, the butcher baker, grew old in his cell, surrounded by the echoes of his own depravity. His eyes, once filled with a cold, calculating hunger, grew dim with the weight of his crimes. Yet, even in the twilight of his years, the question remained, had the monster ever truly been tamed, or was it just waiting for the next hunt?